example, we are going to calculate the break-even point in units and also the break-even point in rands where a company sells more than one product. So you've been given information relating to Batson Limited and you are told that Batson Limited manufactures bicycles and tricycles, so two different products. The following budgeted information is available for the 20x9 financial year. Now, as we work through the information provided, I want you to identify which costs are fixed, which are variable, and which are semi-variable. Because before we can perform any calculations, first, if there are any semi-variable costs, we're going to have to split those costs into their fixed and variable portions, and then we'll work with fixed costs in total and our variable costs per unit. But that needs to be done before we can perform any calculations. We can't work with semi-variable costs. So let's identify what we've been given. First, we have direct material. And direct material is going to be a variable cost. The cost will be constant per unit, but in total, the cost will vary directly with the number of units manufactured. Direct labor. With labor, you need to be careful. You can't always just assume that labor is a variable cost. However, you are specifically told here that this is direct labor, so it's safe to assume that the cost is variable. Obviously, the variable manufacturing overhead is a variable cost. Sales commission is going to vary with the number of units sold, so that is also a variable cost. You are then given the selling price per unit for each product and also the annual demand. Other budgeted costs for the 20x9 year, fixed manufacturing overheads, so obviously that is a fixed cost, and fixed selling and admin costs, that is also a fixed cost. All right, so in this example, you don't have any semi-variable costs because I actually want to focus on the principles behind the calculation of the break-even point rather than trying to split semi-variable costs. However, please note, before you can perform any of the calculations, if you do have semi-variable costs, you first need to split those costs into the fixed and variable portions. Then you can move on to actually answering the required. So first, we are going to calculate the break-even point in units for the 20x9 financial year. Now what I recommend you do is always start by first writing out the formula because once you have the formula you'll then see what other calculations are necessary. So how do we calculate the break-even point in units? We take total fixed costs and we divide by the contribution per unit. However in this example we are dealing with a company that sells two different products. So we need to divide by a weighted contribution per unit. So we have two different calculations that we need to look at. First, let's look at calculating total fixed costs. Now guys, this is a very simple calculation. We had two fixed costs in this question. You just add the fixed cost together, you get the fixed cost in total, and you include that in your calculation above. All right, very simple. Then, now we need to calculate the weighted contribution per unit. So first we start by calculating the contribution per unit. And remember, the contribution per unit is just the selling price per unit minus the variable costs. So once again, this is a very simple calculation because all of the information was provided for both products. So for each product, just take the selling price per unit, deduct all of the variable costs, and that will give you the contribution per unit. Now, the problem that we have in this example is the company sells two different products. So we are going to have to calculate a weighted contribution per unit. And when we perform this calculation, we assume that the sales mix will remain constant. So if you go back to the information provided in the example, you've been given the annual demand. So you've been given the expected sales. Now please note, when you are performing this calculation, you use sales units. We assume that the sales mix will remain constant. You don't use production units. So we are using the expected annual demand, or the expected sales. And we are going to calculate a weighted contribution per unit, assuming that that sales mix remains constant. So first what you need to do is calculate the sales volume in total. So take the expected sales volume for bicycles plus the expected sales volume for tricycles and calculate 
the total expected sales volume. Then, when calculating the weighted contribution per unit, there are two different alternatives. Let's first look at alternative one. With alternative one, you take the contribution per unit for bicycles and you multiply by the sales mix. So they expect to sell 15,000 bicycles, so you multiply by 15,000 and you divide by the total expected sales. Then for tricycles, take the contribution per unit, multiply by the number of units that they expect to sell and divide by the total expected sales in units. Then you add those together and that will give you your weighted contribution per unit, which you can then include in the calculation above. Now as an alternative, instead of calculating the weighted contribution in that way, what you can do is first calculate the contribution in total. So take the contribution per unit and multiply by the number of units that they expect to sell. And do the same thing for both products. So for bicycles, it's going to be 370 Rand multiplied by 15,000 units. And for tricycles, 430 Rand multiplied by 18,000 units. Calculate the total contribution. Then, once you have the total contribution, you can divide by the total expected sales in units, and that will also give you the weighted contribution per unit. So it's up to you. You can perform the calculation in either of those ways. Obviously, don't do both. Just do one. Then you can calculate your break-even point. Now, please just be careful, guys. When calculating the break-even point, you always need to round up to the nearest whole number. Because if you round down, then the company won't break even. They'll make a small loss. So please make sure that you always round up. Now, at this point, we've calculated the total break-even point for Batson Limited. We now need to take this and split it between the two products. So what you do is first don't round. So take the number that you haven't yet rounded. You'll round your final answer. And in order to split this between the two different products, between bicycles and tricycles, you just use the same sales mix in units again. So here's our sales mix just below. This is my sales mix over there. They expect to sell 15,000 bicycles and 18,000 tricycles. So for bicycles, you multiply by 15,000 and you divide by 33,000, which is obviously the total. And for tricycles, you multiply by 18,000 and you divide by 33,000. And you then have your break-even point in units. And once again, just make sure that you round up. Then, I just want to discuss two common mistakes that are made with you quickly. Firstly, students often want to exclude period costs from this calculation. So remember, what are period costs? Period costs are costs that we don't include in the value of inventory. So selling and admin costs, sales commission, those are period costs. So often when calculating the break-even point, students want to exclude those costs from the calculation. Now guys, think about this logically. The break-even point is the point where the company does not make a profit or a loss. So any expenses that affect profit or loss must be taken into account in this calculation. So we are not only looking at product costs in this calculation or costs that you would include in the value of inventory. You must take into account all expenses that affect profit or loss. So in other words, your product costs and also period costs. Then in addition to that, another mistake that is often made is students want to take these fixed costs and split the fixed costs between the two different products and perform two separate break-even calculations. Now please note that that is also incorrect. Because in this question, you've been given common fixed costs. You've been given the fixed costs in total. These are common fixed costs. Meaning that these fixed costs are incurred for the benefit of both products that are produced by this company. And we don't know what portion of the fixed cost relates to bicycles and what portion relates to tricycles. So you can't try and split that cost between the two products and then perform two separate break-even calculations. You first always calculate the break-even point in total for the company as a whole. Then using the sales mix, you split that between the two different products. The only time that you can perform two separate break-even calculations is if you don't have any common fixed costs, 
but instead you've been given the fixed costs that directly relate to the production of bicycles and the fixed costs that directly relate to the production of tricycles. If you've been given the information in that way, so we know exactly what the fixed costs are for bicycles, we know exactly what the fixed costs are for tricycles, and there are no common fixed costs, then you can perform two separate break-even calculations. But if you've been given common fixed costs, you must first calculate the break-even point in total for the company as a whole, and then use the sales mix to split that between the two different products. All right, so that deals with the break-even points in units. We are now going to look at the break-even point in rands. So once again, start by writing out the formula, because then you'll know what calculations are necessary. So to calculate the break-even point in rands, we take total fixed costs and we divide by the contribution margin. Now the total fixed costs are exactly the same as what we calculated previously. There's no change over there, so you can include the total fixed costs in the calculation. Then we need to calculate the contribution margin. Now, your contribution margin is just contribution divided by sales. So, for both of the products, we have already calculated the contribution per unit. So, all you need to do in order to get contribution in total is take the contribution per unit, multiply by the number of units that they expect to sell for each product, and that will give you the total contribution. All right, so we have the total contribution for each product and also for the company as a whole. We have total contribution. If we want the contribution margin, we now need to divide by total sales. So we need to calculate total sales. Again, guys, that's a very simple calculation. You take the selling price per unit and you multiply by the number of units that they expect to sell, and that will give you total sales. You then calculate the contribution margin by taking the total contribution and dividing by total sales. And you can then include that in your calculation above. Now there's an easy way to remember this. When we were calculating the break-even point in units, we had to divide by the weighted contribution per unit. And in alternative two, I say to you, you can calculate the weighted contribution per unit by taking total contribution and dividing by the expected sales in units. So when we are calculating the break-even point in units, we take total contribution and we divide by the expected sales in units. Now, when we are calculating the break-even point in rands, you still take total contribution, but instead of dividing by expected sales in units, you now need to divide by the RAND value of your expected sales because you are calculating the break-even point in RANDs. All right, so that's just an easy way to help you remember the difference between the two calculations. Okay, so we've calculated the break-even point for the company as a whole, and we now need to split that between the two different products. Now, when we calculated the break-even point in units, we used the expected sales in units to split the total break-even point between the two different products. Now, because you are calculating the break-even point in rands, please note that you use the rand value of your expected sales in order to split the total break-even point between the two products. And you already have the RAND value of your sales because you needed that to calculate the contribution margin. So there's the RAND value of your sales for bicycles, for tricycles, and also in total. All right, and that then gives you the break-even point in RANDs for both of the products. That then brings us to the end of this example. Thank you, guys.